Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Mix and Match Monday video. This is where I share card ideas that mix and match products from different companies to create a card, or in this case, four cards. I use the My Favorite Things Radiating Rays stencil to create this rainbow background. And I loved it so much that I wanted to create more than one card, and I actually created four actually five. Um, I created these at a retreat several weeks ago and had already mailed one off and I needed to do one for the video when I got home. So I went ahead and created another one. And the great thing about this card design is it's super easy to replicate over and over if you want to with any colors you want. Maybe rainbows are not your thing or you want a nice sunshiny background. This stencil is going to create that for you. I am using a bunch of colors of Distress Ink here, holding down the stencil in the middle. This is kind of the messy way to do it. You could tape it down if you wanted to, but I went ahead and just used my fingers to hold it down. Starting in that upper left corner, I am using Picked Raspberry, Candied Apple, Carved Pumpkin, Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, Salty Ocean, and Wilted Violet Distress Inks. The key to doing this is I, I like how Distress Inks blend on Bristol Smooth cardstock. And that's how you I achieve that kind of seamless, really beautiful blend on my background that you're gonna see. You could try this with different kinds of cardstock and you're gonna get different kinds of results. I think the results are really soft on this particular cardstock and blending is super easy, which is definitely what I was going for here. I'm moving my way around, just pouncing the color on. Not too terrible dark. You want it dark enough that when you go back over each of the colors here in a little bit, that you still have the definition of the rays, but you can, it blends it out and softens it, if that makes sense. So now I'm simply gonna just gently start pouncing the color over the areas. So where the pink rays are, I'm gonna pounce on that picked raspberry, soften it up, blend it gently, gently, kind of blend it with my ink blending tool. It's more of a pounce um, for most of the colors. Otherwise, I, I blend a little bit, but you can kind of see here with the orange that it blends it out if there's a lot of ink in your ink blending tool. And I didn't want the ink rays themselves to completely disappear. In the center, I'll use that squeezed lemonade and just do a circular motion to make kind of that middle portion kind of look like a sun, I guess. Give it a little bit of color. I'll blend out as I go. I'm using a scrap piece of paper to help keep my fingers out of the ink because I made a huge ink spot there in that top corner and I had to go back over it with the picked raspberry color pouncing on the twisted citron now and you can just see how much adding the color over top of the stencil softens the whole look and adds color to the entire background panel. Peacock feathers then blend it into salty ocean and finally finish with wilted violet which this tends to be kind of a dark color, I think, so I really just kind of stuck with the pouncing motion here rather than blending. I'll go back over the center, even though this particular center is gonna be pretty well covered up with the animal that I color from the Winnie and Walter Big Hug stamp set. I'm gonna buff any excess color off with a dry paper towel now. The ink, distress inks, tend to sit on top of this paper a little bit, and it stays wet a little bit longer than other papers. So I wanna make sure it's buffed nice and dry so I don't have to worry about getting finger marks or other things like that in it. You could also hit it with a heat tool and dry it if you wanted to. So there's my background. Next, I'm gonna grab an animal from this Winnie and Walter Big Hug stamp set. These are the cutest little critters. I absolutely adore them. I'm only going to share coloring one of the animals here. I used a different animal for each of the four cards that I'm sharing, all from this stamp set, all with very similar colors of Copic markers, all in neutrals. So they're all warm grays, browns, things like earth tones, anything like that. 
stamped the images on Nina smooth white cardstock using the Lawn Fawn jet black ink. And then I'll color this in with some Copic markers. I will speed through this, but I left the coloring portion in simply because a couple of the cards do feature the elephants. They are colored exactly the same as I'm showing here. I went a little darker with this elephant like the card you'll see at the end of the video that features two elephants. I stuck with this same color combination for one of the elephants and on the other one I just went a tiny bit lighter to give them a little bit of difference between the two critters. You can color them in in any color you want. I like to keep them a little bit neutral. I thought it looked nice against the really bold bright rainbow backgrounds. I love the animals from this stamp set. This is a big stamp set too. There are nice, nice sized critters. I think the illustrations are darling. Just so super fun. I did die cut the panel for my video today with the Simon Says Stamp wonky rectangles die. So it has that stitching design all the way around the edges just dresses up the edges of the panel a little bit. You'll notice that the other cards have a postage stamp style background. This is a Winnie and Walter die collection that I used for the others. I actually borrowed it from a friend so I didn't have it here at home to replicate that. But you could use any kind of die that you wanted to or even not use a die. With, these are pretty simple cards. You stencil, you add a cute critter, a nice stamped and embossed greeting, and then some simple embellishments. So I kept it, I, I thought the decorative edge, I guess I want to say, it just kind of kicks it up a notch, makes it a little bit dressier. But you could totally just trim the paper down a little bit if you wanted to and not worry at all about die cutting these if you didn't want to. So there is the elephant, some little dot detail to dress him up. The monkey is in some of my favorite earth tones, which are the E40, 43, 44, and 47. Just super, super cute and very easy to color. Once I have these completely colored in, there are coordinating dies for these images available from the Winnie and Walter online shop. These are the big, big hugs cutaway dies. So if you're looking for the coordinating dies, they are fantastic for this. I also think that most of these images wouldn't be too bad to fussy cut. Just cut them out with your scissors if you wanted to. I'm going to use an anti cling powder tool there on the bottom portion of my background panel and stamp a greeting from the Big Hug stamp set with Versamark ink, sprinkle on a little white embossing powder and then heat set this with my heat tool. I chose to stamp and emboss on top of the Distress ink background. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and die cut your panel first, stamp and emboss your greeting and then add all of your inking on top for embossed resist. Either way, you're going to end up with very similar results. Here's my cute little critter that I'll put some nice strong adhesive on and just stick right there in the center of the card right above the greeting. I've die cut some mini hearts using the Simon Says Stamp mini hearts die. This is probably one of my most used dies for small heart accessories. They are the perfect size hearts and there are several different styles. So if you kind of like the folksy art or a more traditional rounded heart um, or even a little bit of a wonky one, and then they come in all three sizes. So there's those three styles and then there's three sizes in each, which I think is fantastic. I kind of call this the folk heart, the long skinny kind of one. And I went ahead and colored those in with some candied apple distress ink. One of my favorite things to do is to go ahead and color in a white die cut accent of any kind, whether it be a star or a heart or whatever it might be, with Distress Inks to perfectly match the project. You could also color them in with Copic markers or other kind of markers or other kind of tools or even die cut them from solid cardstock. 
Once I've adhered these to the background, I'm going to go ahead and cover the hearts with some glossy accents to really make them shine. Go ahead and let that dry completely. Attach this panel to a white card base, whether it be a side fold or a top fold, depending on the design of the card. And the cards are all finished. I think these would make a fantastic gift if you created a whole bunch of these and gave them to someone. Uh, maybe put thank you greetings on them so somebody has a whole bunch of thank you cards on hand. Thanks for joining me today for this Mix and Match Monday card project featuring lots of different products from My Favorite Things, Winnie and Walter, and Simon Says Stamp, plus more. The supplies I used to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.